Right. You lucky dog. I know. <laughs> Did you get a bungalow? Are you kidding? <laughs> you hadn't been here yesterday for that one. You had all the facts on a bungalow. All right. Another question. Yes. This is from Mr. Drury. You were such a horseman, and you, you could tell when you were riding. I love watching you ride. But did you ever have any dismounts? Dismounts. Any uh, fell off the horse <laughs> during not, the shoot? Not on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> that was my question. <laughs> One memorable time I was sitting on, on horseback and Doug was there with me and uh, so tired, you know, I mean tired, tired, hadn't had any sleep in seven, eight days. You know, we just, you, it just wasn't any time to sleep. So I'm sitting there, it's a nice sunny day and so forth, and I just went to sleep and fell right off the <laughs> empty ground like a ton of sack of cement. And I woke up, of course, and Doug said, well, Jim, I'd like to see you do that again. <laughs>
Yes. yes. Great. Now, I hate it. Took so one for loss. Oh yeah, yeah. He was, he was so wonderful. You know, he and his wife were original members of the Mercury Theater, Lewis and Wells, and they were involved in the uh, War of the Worlds radio show in 1939. But everybody thought the Martians had landed, and they were in that show. They went. That's how far back their classical roots went, and they brought all of that, all of those experiences. And all of that stock experience and all that uh, bus and truck tra travel experience to the Virginia. When they got there, they had all this background behind them. And they were magnificent. And they were so humble, too. Oh, yeah. Just, you know, they were magnificent. The realest, nicest people. Well, he was such an interesting uh, actor because, you know, he had replaced Ward Bond on a wagon train. Yeah. And then he comes in, uh, he replaced Charles Rickford. Yeah, but Charlie died on the show. Yeah. He, he, he finished the show on Friday night and went, went home and died Sunday. Wow. Oh, <coughs> so they had to recast quickly then. Yeah, well, he, he Charlie was just, you know, he had pneumonia and we didn't know it. Uh, I don't know if he knew it or not, but he, he stayed and finished the show. I think he did know it. He was, a, he was as tough a guy as that guy. He was really, really tough. He was tough guy. Question, raise your hand, yes, sir. Well, Don, this episode about state I mean, you know, that was labeled Stacy, was that before or after you, you know, threatened to quit or wanted to quit? That was before. That was before? So that was one of the uh, scripts no, that you really didn't ones. like? No, no. That oh, was okay. Stacey, the Stacy one was a good one. Okay. That was a good one. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. There were about uh, five or six shows that were pretty good. And then the rest all, after they got the deal, like I said, with NBC. Well, it's just like taking $30,000 out of the budget for a hit. Yeah, they, they, they get this huge hit. They get the whole renewed, really based on the fact that they get these good writing scripts that they've done. And then they take help the writers away to try to save a little bit of money on this huge amount of money that they make. It was the dumbest thing. I'd ever heard of I life. did like the idea that you stayed at the same time slot the whole nine years whole nine and never years. never changed the time slot. Well, I think that was NBC. Why? Yeah, no, but I'm just saying I'm glad that they didn't change it so you have a hard time trying to find it. You know? Right. It's a little bit of, of trivial history. Jeanette Nolan played the cook in the ranch house in the original half hour Virginian that I did for Screen Gems that never sold to the networks. So she, I, she was involved in that whole show, and I just, it was the first time I worked with her, I loved working with her. About a month later, I got another pilot to do for Andy Fennedy, called The Yank. It was a spinoff of The Rebel, if you remember The Rebel. And we, I played a, 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 a Union Army artillery officer who was a doctor, and he came to the South, as Lincoln said in the second inaugural, we must bind up the nation's wounds. And he came to the South because all the doctors in the South were dead. They'd all been killed in the war. Almost all of them had been killed. There were no doctors. <coughs> They'd all been tending to the wounded and they got, got their, their head blown off, you know. So he came to the South and everybody was called the Yank. And, you know, you can imagine how much, what kind of a reception he got in the South at that point. Uh, nobody liked him, and they threw rocks at him and so forth, but he prevailed. And it was a good show, and it, again, it was a half-hour show. It didn't sell to the networks. But John McIntyre played the only doctor left in that town in the South and was a mentor to the end. So the history of the McIntyres go really with me through, through my whole career. That is a wild story. <laughs> I want to just briefly go back to Matt. Shiloh. We don't have to mention Stuart Granger. Oh. I'll check with you in there about that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, not only did they bring him on, but they changed the name of the show and they changed your costumes. Well, they, everybody thought that was a good idea. Get a new hat, new outfit, new gun, new horse, the whole thing. Get a whole brand new look at the show. People tuned in their television in the fall and wanted to look for the Virginian. It wasn't there anymore. They never heard of the men from Shiloh. And we went off the air. It was a real easy to do that way. You know? Did it last the whole season? Huh? Did it last the whole season and go off the air? It lasted the whole, the whole season. season. Lee Majors was in it too. Yeah. yeah. I think he did three or four shows. 
It was supposed to be four stars, and uh, everybody did six shows, but it didn't work out that way. I did 12, and Doug did probably eight, and I don't know what those other guys did, but not much. And Granger didn't do hardly anything. Oh, well, he had two or three shows, but he went to Old Mexico to shoot him because he had a tax problem as a British subject, you know. So he couldn't stay in the country. He had to leave the country for a certain period of time in order to well, save himself from taxes. So they went out to Old Mexico. We weren't involved in any of that. Yes, right here and then back there. Okay, yes, I would like to know from each of you. Mr. Jerry mentioned his grandfather, but did you have someone particular in mind when you developed your character on the Virginian? These other gentlemen you're talking about? Are yes, all you had mentioned okay. your grandfather that you put a lot of him into your character. And I was just wondering from the others if they had anyone oh. in mind when they developed their character for the Virginian. Gary? Uh, for me it was, um, I kind of looked for Steve in me, because of, uh, it's a lot easier to be who I am. I mean, it took me, it took me a while, and until I got into acting, uh, I, was a, I was afraid to be me. You know, I was, ooh, um, people are going to think I'm weird or wrong or whatever. <laughs> but then when I became an actor, and they gave me a part, I could be anything. So when I got the part of Steve, it was like, well, what about Steve is in here? And what is it about me that is Steve? So that's what I did. Just had fun with it. Simple. Roberta? About the same for me, too. I, I, uh, I, my character was, was basically me. I mean, I, you know, it was, I was kind of the girl next door, which I, I think I kind of, I kind of loved, you yeah. know. So that's kind of, I've got the same character. Yeah. They basically wrote this, uh, the character for me. I mean, you know, since Frank and uh, Charlie both wanted me, <clears throat> and they saw me playing this uh, rebel with a kind of a good heart, but still a tough guy, you know, hot in, uh, they just kind of took that character, Joe Churney character from Baby Place, and kind of adapted it over. They looked at some of the other stuff that I'd done, and, uh, and I think that was it. So it was a kind of a natural, I mean, it just, you know. Well, I'll tell you story about that, which is kind of indicative of what we're all talking about. Uh, I did the, the yank for Andy Kennedy, and Andy's a great Civil War historian. So I was cast in a picture called Hell to Pay, which was a digital production shot in Hollywood on two long Saturdays, or two, two days on a weekend. I shot it in two 16-hour days. And almost, almost with one exception, all of the actors I was working with weren't even in California. They weren't there. They, he didn't have them in there. I, the director was on a step ladder and fed me my lines, and I stood against the black wall. And it's like flying an F-15 in the fog. You know, you really can't see where you're going. Uh, but we did that little show, and it turned out better than I ever thought it would. However, before that, I wanted some. I called Andy Kennedy and I said, what book would you recommend that I would read which would give me a concise and, and brief history of the Civil War? I'm playing a character right after the Civil War, a sheriff in the small town, and I should know about the battles, I should know about the, the dynamics of the war, I should know more about it than I do. He said, Jim, hit your marks and say your words and forget about it. <laughs>
Yours was basically a little different, but we all knew you. <laughs> well, he just, everybody wanted to do something different, and that was his take on that. Underneath that beard, he was still Doug the Moore. Oh, sure. <laughs> Great actor, right? I don't know. We all make choices. Yeah. So you every one, every choice we make in life, folks, has a consequence for good or bad. And so you that take that. To oh, yeah. Still yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you still, though, you had a say in what you were going to wear on the show. I did, yeah. Okay. So that was I'm the one who picked that red shirt. Yeah, oh, right. I insisted on it. It was corduroy upholstery material. I thought it would look great. It did look great. It, did. it was 120 degrees. <laughs> She's excited. <laughs> just running right off my body. <laughs> <laughs> and it just like rock, rock right through it. Oh, We've got time for one or two more questions here. Anybody else?